Okay, hi. How are hi. you? <laughs> oh, fine. Thank you. I'm so Andrea. sorry. I've never been here. Uh, yeah. Neither have I. So I was just like, well, I think this might be okay. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Another still from a movie, but no, no, but obviously not. But no. This is photo. So this is also one of the photos from the uh, exhibition I'm having oh, at the moment. That, by the way, is called A Visual Journey to Unveil Another Tale of the City. A Visual Journey to un unveil, unveil Another Tale of the City. Another okay, okay. Nice. And, and so this was made in Hong Kong again? It is and, made in Hong Kong, yeah. And yep. it's on, what's that street? Something street. Uh, Mercy can't. Street. Mercy Street, okay. So the, so the image is... Ah, the, the sort of the, the throwback to another time, you could say, because it's black and white, it's got, you know, uh, it's the inside of a diner. It looks like a diner. There's the uh, neon uh, Chinese characters. Uh, there's a woman standing inside looking at the photographer through the window. She's wearing a mask, which is just, you know, in a way, it's part of reality now. Hidden away down the alley is a guy... And clearly, this is really great printing and great and great exposure, where you're careful to print this person, of course, on his phone. <laughs> Everybody's yeah, on their phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can just see the hint. He's wearing his mask. Yeah. Um, and so where along the 100 days, what number would this be? Oh, I don't even know my heart, but I could easily say that is a number sometimes in the end, I think. Towards the end, okay. Towards the end, yes. It could be something like 86. Okay, 86. <laughs> I love it. I, I, did, I did a series. It is 94. 94. No, 94. 94. Nice. Sorry. Nice. Mm. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> no, it's great. Like, um, In a way, art is also created by the spectator. So, you know, you, you made the image. You were sort of taken by the scene in the moment. You, you mm. didn't play like the woman isn't a, a model, um, but everything about this image is just beautiful, so rich and dense. And and by looking at it, I can you know my immediate reaction was oh it's a still from a movie and all this stuff. Right? So as a photographer across your life, yeah, when did you get? reaction from the outside world that said wow you really kind of, you did something powerful can you think of a, a photo or can you think of a moment where where something about the photography that you created really sparked some kind of realization or some kind of uh, awakenings hmm i started quite early I have a photographer. My stepfather is a photographer, so I was given camera quite early. I started already when I was seven. Wow. Uh, but it was towards when I became a teenager, like when I was 16, 17, when I started to become more interested. I, I developed my own black and white mm. film and, and, and worked in the darkroom, things like that. I think. I would say around my 20s. Okay. Yeah. So it, actually quite late. And it, it is, see the thing, it is funny. The, I, I, I always took pictures, but after school, I was out traveling. And I went to Israel, I went okay. to Egypt, and I became really sick. Oh, that's nice. I became really, really sick. So I got meningitis. Oh, wow. wow, the, wow. Uh, the, in, in Egypt? In Egypt, the, the bacterial infection. Yeah, oh, the wow. bacterial one. So when I came to the uh, and I was after two days, I was in a coma. Sure. So and then when I was sent to the hospital, they told my friend, you know, she has about ten percentage to survive this. Yeah. And I was really sick, so I was in the hospital for three and a half weeks, and then flown right back to Sweden. So then I was, it, it actually took a year and so for me to slowly recover. recover and. Reading that I use. I think we have to wait while the, while the speaking of Israel and uh, and combat helicopters. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> you know, I, I I look Israeli because I am Israeli. Yeah. So, yes. 
so I, yeah, so I was flown, flown back to Sweden. It took me about a year to recover. Oh, and reading, I think, that I really enjoyed before became more difficult. So wow. I actually be- focused more on the visual okay. uh, thing. So actually, after that, I, I, I also worked, you know, when, I, when you work with the um, Hasselblads and uh, big formal camera, you, you see the picture upside down. Yeah. And, and, and flip, yeah. yes. So I I did that for many many years. It's not until I had to work with the small medium, the the, the thirty five mm cameras, sure. <laughs> I started to work uh, oh. like the right way. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I I I really had to work hard actually to to do that because I easily would work upside down and flip. Okay, mm. but that's an interesting point. Working in black and white is itself kind of a step away like it forces you to look at the world as a kind of a kind of aesthetic formal you know it's like one step removed from how you actually see yeah so maybe even though it's in color and you're looking through the the, the you know the medium format prism that's also flipped in and yeah so I can see it. now how does that relate to this image where or does it relate to this image where what's really interesting is that the the, the composition is just perfect it's just you clearly know what you're doing. Like this is just, it is just a, a hyper beautiful, aesthetically pleasing photograph. So, is your process when walking around to break things into light and shape and and like, do you do that as you see, or do you kind of just go with the flow? Oh, yeah. your I lights and shadows and reflections are. I I I I see I see that already, yeah. So and it's I, I and I think uh, for a lot of photographers, I mean, it's our gift. Sure. Yes. I can quite easily, the way I see it, uh, decide whether I want to have it in if I see it in black or white or or mm-hmm. color. Okay. I I can see both. Right. But it doesn't course. really. Yeah. But 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 this, for example, I don't read a uh, Chinese character, but. And the galleries, Sin Sin, she, she said that this is a really nice way because it says, I like, I love slow cook food. Mm-hmm. And here is a double happiness sign. Oh, okay. Which obviously is really nice together. Right. Okay, yeah. so uh, Andrea is basically pointing to the, um, I like slow, slow cooked food in, in Chinese characters out of sort of classic neon. Mm-hmm. And then the name of the restaurant is called the Hangout Corner, I guess. Yeah. And then... When she was pointing to the double happiness uh, character is just outside the building on maybe the entranceway to an apartment building or something. So yeah. it, it, and that's not at all, and, and oh, sorry, that's not a, a neon sign. So yeah, some images you kind of feel like whoever made this image is clearly a photographer. Just the attention to, to the exposure, and like I'm saying, like I said before, the the way it's printed, where you see this one guy off in the off in the alleyway, in, just barely in the light, checking his phone or whatever. I mean, there's such a, a depth and richness uh, that you know I appreciate very much. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh, move on. So, is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Tuning it raw?